Good morning. Welcome to A Closer Look. I'm your host, Linda Fontaine. Today, my guest is Andy True, who is the Assistant Superintendent of the Kingsport City Schools. Thank you for being with good us Good morning. Today. It's good to be with you. So we've got a lot to talk about. Great. Um, first of all, Mary Beth had reached out to talk about the nominations for the Hall of Fame for Kingsport City Schools. Tell me a little bit about that. This is a project we're really excited about. This is our fifth year of the Kingsport City Schools Hall of Fame. When we started talking about this five years ago, really the idea was, you know, how could we develop a project? How could we uh, really take a focused look at the history of our school system. I think as educators we're always concerned with kind of where are we right now and what do we need to do next that we often don't take time to stop and look back on where we've been and really appreciate the folks that, that came before us and all the efforts that went on you know, really to make Kingsport the great community and the great educational community that it is. So mm -hmm. that's where it all kind of came from. Uh, and so over the last five years, we have gone through a process where during the spring, we ask for nominations uh, for uh, who are those exemplary educators that really came before us and formed the foundation of Kingsport City Schools and, and finding a way to elevate them and their stories uh, and those individuals in a way that celebrates those contributions. So mm -hmm. uh, we're in a process right now of accepting nominations for another couple of weeks for our, our Hall of Fame. May 1st is our deadline. Uh, and really what we are just trying to make sure our community is uh, number one aware of the project but also encouraging them to bring forward those stories you know who are and when we say educators we don't mean just teachers and administrators you know who are all of those other educators that came uh, in contact with students and uh, you know, it positively impacted them it might be you know the bus driver that greeted them with a smile and, and oh, got them okay. safely to work every day or the custodian that mm -hmm. you know kept their school clean the cafeteria worker who you know provided you know nutritional meals every day those kinds of stories as well. Mm -hmm. Really just kind of collecting those stories together and, and uh, finding a way that we uh, can get those nominations in and uh, go through our process to honor those individuals. So who can nominate? Anyone can nominate. Uh, we have uh, really the process is on our, our website uh, which is k12k.com. It's the Google Kingsport City Schools website and uh, right there in the middle of the home page there's a link that'll take you. We've tried to make it a very short process. Mm -hmm. It's really not, we, we don't want the process to be a barrier to bringing forward those those key individuals. So, right. Um, so just you can go online and fill out a form and we do ask for a couple of letters of recommendation and that's really just so that the selection committee has some evidence that they can kind of use to base their judgment on mm. uh, and so that's really the process anyone can and can nominate someone to, to be brought forward you know we do the, the bylaws of the Hall of Fame say that the employee must have been with us for five years mm -hmm. and been retired for five years uh, but really other than that any impactful employee is eligible to be nominated okay so have you received a lot of nominations we have it, it's it's great you know one of the other pieces to our the way we have it structured is that anyone who was previously nominated and was not inducted uh, their their nomination stays active for five years oh. so we already had some folks that were nominated in prior years that mm -hmm. will be brought forward for consideration but we've also received several very strong candidates this year as well and we just want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity because we've all been touched by a teacher. We've all mm -hmm. been touched by you know an educator in some way that's impacted us. That everyone has the opportunity to bring forward those individuals for this for this honor uh, for our school system. Now, if you said already, I'm sorry, but how many are you planning on picking? Uh, we the way the structure of the hall sits is that you can we have three different categories based on when they retired mm -hmm. so any uh, our kind of our groups are 50 years and back 25 to 50 years and then 25 years to current oh, okay. and we can nominate according to the bylaws up up to two individuals in each of those categories okay, so we so could have as many as six gotcha. uh, it could be fewer than that depending on if there are candidates that's the selection committee and uh, just how many they decide that they move forward in each of those categories and so once people are nominated mm -hmm. and you close the nominations by May 1st, mm -hmm. then you guys discuss and have a, a, a discussion about who you're going to pick. Correct. Then do you have like a ceremony? There is, and, and that really culminates a process that lasts most of the summer when mm -hmm. it comes to we have a, a community-wide selection committee that works together to vet all of those nominations, read through all the material, and then we get together in the middle of the summer and, and have a kind of a large meeting where we, we decide what our slate of, of, uh, of, nom or of uh, inductees will be. And then we actually have an induction ceremony in July, late July, at our 
uh, back to school convocation when all of our staff comes together for the first time to kick off the school year. So it's really a neat way to tie together our history with our current mm -hmm. employees. That is neat. Um, and so at our back to school convocation, we, we have an actual induction. They receive their, uh, there's a, a trophy involved. And then oh, we also, okay. really to me though, the, 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 the neatest part of the whole process uh, is following that we have an award luncheon where the inductees and their families and friends are invited. And it's just a way to celebrate them and mm -hmm. their families. And kind of the culminating event of that is just a kind of an open mic, passing of the mic, let's tell stories about oh, the inductees nice. and their families. And it, it's just a way to celebrate and, and keep those stories alive. To me, that's really the exciting moment of the whole process is when uh, you know, you're able to be in a room with these, these educational greats and hear them tell stories about their history and hear mm -hmm. their family and friends tell stories and honor them. Uh, it's just a special moment. I think that would be neat. And for the, the younger nominees too, to hear some of the, the stories from the older teachers that have been around a long time, right. how things have changed. Correct. And they can talk about all that. Yeah. Well, that sounds fabulous. That, yeah. That's really cool you guys do that. What made you guys start doing this? It was just, you know, we, when we were right around the time of the centennial and, and mm -hmm. thinking about it, I think it just sparked a lot of thought as a school system on where have we been. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we didn't just arrive at our current place in history and, you know, the quality of education in Kingsport is always cited as, as you know, a key driver for our development as a mm -hmm. community. Um, that doesn't just happen. That, that happens because of a long history of individuals that have dedicated themselves to being great mm -hmm. uh, and providing a great level uh, of experience and education and service to our families and in our community. And so uh, it was just a way that we thought, how can we look back on our history? How can we honor those individuals? How can we keep that history alive? Mm -hmm. And also inspire our current employees and community members uh, to be great uh, and to, to strive, continue that strive for greatness. I love that. I love that. Now let's talk about DB for a minute because mm -hmm. everybody in town who ever drives by DB notices that there is a new addition yes. to DB that's been going on for a while now, the new technology building. Correct. Mm -hmm. And um, we were talking a little bit beforehand and I was like, where did they come up with the idea of making it look so different than mm -hmm. the existing DB? Because I'm just a traditionalist. I don't like a lot of change. I don't necessarily <laughs> like that about myself. But it is so different than DB. Mm -hmm. And I always thought DB was so cool looking in and of itself. And it's nice to have it. I know I get the modern sleek technology part mm -hmm. of it. But what, what, tell me a little bit about all that. Sure, this process really started several years ago when we were looking at the capacity needs we had at, at Dobbins Bennett. And obviously as we've gone through a long conversation in our community over the last several years mm -hmm. on how to best meet those, meet those needs. Um, at the same time, knowing we had capacity issues, we also knew that we wanted to evolve our curriculum offerings, our educational uh, environments in a way uh, to provide our students now the types of opportunities that they need to be successful for a future that hasn't even been defined yet. You know, our high schoolers now that'll be in, entering in careers that are still, you know, being developed. Right. So knowing that that's focused around those, in a lot of ways, those, those science, technology, STEM areas, we started thinking, okay, instead of just building a box, how can we build a facility that matches what we want to do and meets our needs educationally? Because really the key piece is what's going to go on in the space, not just that we have the space. Mm -hmm. So as we started working through that process, drawing in folks that have expertise in architecture uh, and what that needed to look like to, to visually meet the needs uh, and align with the work that's happening inside, which is, again, future career, science and technology, but at the same time honoring the history of, of our school and, and a, an architectural firm, firm out of Atlanta was selected, uh, Perkins and Will, who does a lot of work internationally uh, in that arena to come in and really meet with the community. It started with discussions with DB staff, community members, a lot of different individu individuals having input in that. I think as with any architecture, change is different. You know, some are going to really like it. Some may, you know, kind of yearn for that look mm -hmm. uh, of the way it was. There'll be some transitional elements when it comes to tying the old uh, building into the new, when it comes to some bricking and things like that. Um, as oh, well as uh, part, of the, part of the visual uh, idea of having it being more um, see-through, for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. is that there is still visual tie to the existing building. So when you're sitting in the space, you'll still see some of the, the original building and the mm -hmm. way it all ties together. So um, we're really moving along. We're within weeks mm -hmm. of having that project complete. Wow. Um, you can kind of see some of the, you know, the, the, 
what we call the finishing pieces like the outside, the mm -hmm. canopy is being done, but what you can't see right now is all the interior work that's going on, all the drywalling, all of mm -hmm. the running of um, utilities and, and all of the internal things that are happening um, inside the space. But we're still on target to be wrapped up uh, this summer and, and have students in that space next fall. So wow. it's exciting to see that project. We're about now 15, 16 months into the construction to see that beginning to, yes. you know, to wrap up. So question, I guess it was probably also something to do with the amount of land because I was thinking, why didn't they build it next to it or behind it? And I guess this was the only spot because I thought they're blocking the school. That was a piece of it, exactly. When you talk, mm -hmm. you know, this facility is, is over 70,000 square feet. So when you start talking about that, you know, in the triangle, when you look at the, the land that's there, um, there's not a lot of space mm -hmm. when you kind of draw that, you know, triangle between Fort Henry and Center and Eastman. So how can we take the kind of capacity that we want to add to the school and find a space for it? You know, there's, we are landlocked uh, just with the roads that are there and, and finding the best location for it. One thing it will do as well is there has been for a long time confusion about where the front door of the school is. You know, when guests or visitors mm -hmm. come in, it's, it's unclear, where do I go? This will provide kind of a new front door uh, and an entry point that's more, I think, clear for folks that are visitors, more parking in the front. You know, our old front mm -hmm. door had just a few parking spaces. There'll be many more parking spaces that are available. So um, a lot of that went into the thought and the design. All right, well see, we cleared up a bunch of stuff because people are talking about that all over the yes, place. Yes, they are. Okay, so now that we got that cleared up, let's take a break and then we'll talk about some other things going on with the Kingsport City School System. We'll be right back. 